Well, welcome back to another episode of uh, Interview the Adam Smith with Taurus Egg. But we're going to do this one a little differently. We're going to interview each other back and forth and we're going to talk about some of the key products that we're using out here at our Egg in Motion site and uh, maybe which crops we're using on. But uh, before I get into that, I wanted to mention that uh, a couple of years ago, our marketing team uh, put together a fantastic uh, Taurus portfolio book and uh, it has a lot of great agronomic information in the front. It has a lot of the great product information with yield information. And uh, anything that you don't, don't think you're finding on there, go to our website at taurus.ag. We have all our similar product information. And if you want a personal touch, give one of us at Taurus a shout. Uh, we're going to start out, and I think we'll just, you know, start out as, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the agronomy rather than ask a question is, agronomy is, with everything that we do is, is key. And Taurus loves the fact that it, you know, it kind of starts with the soil and knowing the soil. And we had a long history with with A and L labs, and you know, we built ourselves on learning what's on in the soil. We and we we did a lot of soil tests out here. We do a soil test every year to make sure that what we're putting on the soil makes sense for what our end goal is. So we still value that information. We we love learning with the soil. We. We love talking about uh, the soil and talking to people about their their soil tests. So it's uh, it's it does complete the whole conversation. Uh, so it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. So we definitely appreciate those conversations when we get to talk about from the from the right in the ground up. Um, so uh, the agronomy portion has a lot of good soil information. So and a lot of other great agronomy information. Uh, from uh, salt index charts to uh, nitrogen management with uh, you know uh, from your crop crop and nutrient uh, uptake and removal chart uh, so it's a lot of good stuff yep. in here well I'm going to start out on the the fertility tab and talk about one of the first products that comes comes out in that in that in that booklet is uh, crystal green from Ostera and uh, I'll start with you, Adam, and you can uh, move on to the next product. Adam, what are some some key things of, of what the success of Crystal Green has been for Taurus and for the grower and for the retail, for that matter? Yeah, I can tackle that, Claude. Um, you know, I think it just uh, goes back to the, the low salt index. Um, you know, maybe in a previous, previous video, we were chatting about how we can push the envelope trying to... Uh, increase the phosphate rates that we need to uh, you know and uh, logistically accomplish that as farmers as retailers um, and agronomists I guess put it all together so we need to logistically find a way to uh, put more fo available FOSS to those plants for our growing season to, to meet the goals that we are so crystal green I guess key point of that would be uh, really low salt index uh, compared to a regular uh, regular phosphate fertilizer, so super safe to put either in the seed row or in a side band really close to the seed and uh, get really essentially the majority of that application in year number one of being available. So not, uh, not taken away from the building process of what we're doing with regular phosphate but uh, pushing how much phosphate we can put in that plant in one year. Uh, and I think one of the things that, uh, talking about the, the soil testing background is, is how many soil, soils across Western Canada are low in phosphorus or, or very low. So yep. it's, uh, it's a, a, a product being uh, low salt index that allows us to uh, really manipulate our amount of phosphorus that we can now put in, in that seed row or near that, near that seed. So, we can get the uptake. Excellent. Um, I'll maybe move on to Sulfur Plus if you want to head off a nice question for me, Adam. Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, just how did you come to the calcium sulfate? It's uh, honestly a new product uh, for Taurus, but uh, it's also a very different mindset. So maybe explain that for me. So I guess I'll, I'll go off with, uh, so gypsum's been around for a long time. And uh, so it's, it's, been a, it's been a mainstay on, on, you know, around the world. Uh, maybe not so much in Canada, just due to the fact of uh, the handling of gypsum, the the bulkiness, the uh, it, it's gypsum in its in its real state is is excellent for certain soils. Like it's it it really helps a lot of soils. And the idea that uh, when we had the opportunity to work with uh, Sulfur Plus Group, 
is they brought us a product that now had the logistic mindset. And one of the biggest fallbacks with uh, the regular gypsum is, is they're, they're powdery, they're hard to uh, apply. Uh, you, you, most of the time you can't find a product that you can put in the seed roll. Uh, if you're spreading it, it's, uh, it's tough to, to move around. And Sulfur Plus, uh, the synthetic uh, gypsum, uh, with the way they actually have a patent on how they, they granulate it, really removed a lot of the, the headaches that came with gypsum um, with the same agronomy that gypsum provides. And there's a lot of soils out there that uh, are low in calcium or low in pH uh, that is an excellent fit. Um, the other side to that, uh, gypsum is, is, a, is a neutral pH product and, and the way that it's, it's made, it, it doesn't have that that salt index. It's a salt index around five, which is, is really low. Mm -hmm. And so it allows you to, you know, open up your mind of how you want to use the product. You're not limited by the product itself. You're, you're limited about, beyond what you want to do to uh, help your plant or, or help change your soil. Yep. Just maybe one follow-up question to that is, uh, you know, as, as we all look to, to push and go forward, maybe just the, the resurgence of people looking at calcium. Well, uh, calcium, you know, you don't have to look too far into it. Calcium is so important to a soil structure. Uh, every cell is surrounded by calcium. It, it helps the strength of that plant. It helps that a plant allows it to move nutrients through the, through the plant better. Uh, so it's, it's really important. And, and I, one of the things I didn't cover off is how calcium sulfate, uh, especially the mindset of, of our, uh, the, 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 the sulfur plus, is it's readily available calcium. So it doesn't have to go through that breakdown period to uh, convert from uh, calcium carbonate to calcium. It's uh, readily available and the way the beauty of the product is that the calcium in the, in the sulfate, uh, sulfate is plant available, so it's plant available sulfur and calcium, they will, they will release over time throughout that growing year. So actually your sulfate, like opposed to ammonium sulfate, which is sulf, sulfate that's available to move in the soil right away, this will actually hang around and there's been some, some good studies, one they did with Texas A&M that shows how that sulfur the sulfur from the sulfate is available when that plant needs it, and along with the calcium, yeah. which is great. Up to 90 days, correct, Luke? That's correct, and yeah. it's uh, right in the book here. 90 day plant available uh, sulfate is uh, it's really a game changer, and I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, when it comes to uh, was a really good fit in a low pH scenario, but uh, just the addition even of high pH, you know, that tied up calcium carbonate, it's opening up a whole new world of uh, people looking at calcium in not only low pH soils, but uh, also high pH. It's about getting it into the plant, not how much is uh, bound up in our soil. And a lot of tension on the, on the high mag soils, which are, there's a lot of those in that calcium sulfate can definitely help uh, move some of that magnesium out on those really, really high mag soils.